And there is my Facebook. All right. <clears throat> Good evening, everybody. Uh, Prophet David Taylor here for my second Thursday teaching entitled No More Genies. This is actually the 18th teaching in that series. I know, 18 teachings. That means I've been doing it officially for a year and a half <laughs> uh, as of tonight. So this is the 18th teaching of No More Genies. And remember, the whole point of No More Genies, the whole point of this series is to help us break free from our genie concept of God, break free from anything that is not actually scriptural or biblical, break free from anything that's telling us uh, anything different from the Word of God, any type of what I call Christian myth, or any type of idea that maybe you heard in your religious background, or maybe something you've heard out in the world, but it's not actually what the Scripture says, because genie concept is dangerous. The genie concept has cost people their lives. That's why I'm always so so adamant about teaching against it and teaching what the scripture really says because there have been people that have allowed uh, sick, sick loved ones to die because they misinterpreted the scripture about God healing them. They didn't know how to get a rhema word from God and ask the Lord, what do you want me to do in this situation? Because in every situation... Of healing in the scripture, the Lord did something specific and he did something different. Instead, they said things like, you know, we're not going to take any medicine or we're not going to go to the hospital because God has to do it this way. And one of the things you will discover as you develop your personal walk with God <clears throat> is that God will always do what he said that he would do, but there is no promise that it has to look like what you thought it would look like in your head. And there is no promise that it has to happen the way you think it's going to happen. He'll do what he said. Let me give you one of my favorite examples. One of my favorite examples is when he told Abram, before he changed his name to Abraham, that he was going to become the father of many nations. Now, when you come on with this video, please like and share. I tell you every time I come on that if the Holy Spirit has a prophetic word, it needs to be released around the world to the body of Christ worldwide because people are going to be blessed by it. People can live by it. So please like and share this video as you come on. And thank you for coming on and uh, tuning in live. So when God told Abram and renamed him Abraham that he would become the father of many nations, I'm sure to his mind, just like in my mind, I'm sure that meant he was going to have a lot of kids. And so I'm sure he thought that he and Sarah were, after a lifetime of being barren, that all of a sudden him, he and Sarah were going to have a lot of kids. And that's not what happened. Hey, Erica, how you doing? Good to see you. That is not what happened. Okay? What happened was, after God made that promise, God called Abram out of his land at the age of 75. And then God waited until both Abraham and Sarah's bodies were dead. <clears throat> And, um, okay, Steve, what do you mean you do everything right and God seems like he does not care? You mean like a genie concept. Right. <clears throat> it's a relationship. It's not a religion. And so, <clears throat> and so then uh, God waited until their bodies were dead. And then Sarah said, well, why don't you go ahead on and hook up with my handmaid, Hagar, and we'll have kids by her. And that turned out to be a mess. And God came back to them and said, no, I said, you and Sarah, you and your wife are going to have a baby. And they both laughed. That's when they laughed. And the Lord, because Sarah was like, I'm old, my husband's old, and you're talking about we're going to have a baby. Yet, nevertheless, God waited until it was physically impossible for them to do it, and then the Lord gave them a child. And Sarah only had the one child. Now, after Sarah died, Abraham got married again and had six more kids by a woman named Keturah. Okay? So the point I'm trying to make is that it didn't happen when they thought it was going to happen, and the show didn't happen the way they thought it was going to happen, but God still did what he said, because God is a person, not a set of rules. And you have to ask the Lord in any situation what it is that he wants you to do. Because God going to do what he said he would do, but it doesn't have to look like the way you thought it was going to look in your head. And it doesn't have to happen the way the way, that's a lot of people's problem with Jesus to this day, because the Lord didn't show up, nor did he behave the way they thought he was going to behave, okay? That's genie concept. That's when you have set up a picture or a movie in your head, and you think it has to happen a certain way, and if God doesn't do it that way, then you get all mad, 
and you get all disappointed, then you start talking about how the word of God ain't true and all that faith stuff don't work and all the stuff that people do, or you let your child die because you wouldn't take them to the hospital because you thought that, that God had to heal your child the way you thought he was going to heal them, that he had to heal them miraculously or raise them up off the bed of sickness or whatever, when maybe the Holy Spirit was telling you to go to the hospital. Maybe there was some medical help that you needed that was available at the hospital, okay, that, that you know, wasn't going to happen at home. So the point I'm trying to make is Genie Concept has cost people their lives. One more time. Genie Concept has cost people their lives. That's why it's so dangerous. So that's why I started this teaching, and, and I said for those of you just now coming on, uh, thank you for joining me live, by the way. This is the 18th message in this series. That means I've been doing Genie Concept for a year and a half. A year and a half, because I do it once a month on the second Thursday. And I've been talking about the wrong ideas that we have in our heads from Christian myth, from bad religious teaching, from experiences we had as children, as children, from what mama and them say, from what people say in popular culture, <clears throat> as opposed to what the scripture actually says. <clears throat> Excuse me. And when you, when you are operating on genie concept, okay, it's dangerous. Okay? It's dangerous. That's what I'm trying to get the saints to understand. It is absolutely dangerous for you to be running around uh, quoting scripture, having the promises of God, but thinking that it has to play out <clears throat> the way you thought it was going to play out, thinking that it has to look the way you thought it was going to look, thinking that it's going to happen in a time or a season where you say, where you thought, because I'm sure when Abram and Sarai were told by God that he was going to be the father of many nations, I'm sure they thought that meant they was all of a sudden going to start having lots of babies. It was 25 years later that they had their first child together. 25 years later, Abraham fathered that child at 100 and Sarah giving birth at 90. So that's why genie concepts are so dangerous. So that's why I preach so hard and preach and teach so hard against it. Okay? Because we need to get rid of it in the body of Christ. We need to get rid of these ridiculous ideas <clears throat> that we've been carrying and teaching for years that have cost <clears throat> some people their lives. And we need to look at what the Lord actually says in the scripture, what the Bible actually says. Okay, so that's what No More Genius is about, if this is your first time checking it out. In a nutshell, I strongly encourage you to watch the very first video I did in the No More Genius series. That's available on my Facebook Live, uh, on my Prophet David Taylor Facebook page. It's also available on my YouTube channel, because I go into more detail, and I break down a lot of different myths. So I strongly encourage you to watch uh, Genie, No More Genius from the beginning. Now, the series I've been working on for these last several videos has been, <clears throat> and I encourage you to go back and look at the beginning of that too, has been preaching and teaching what the Lord actually preached and taught. Because, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm sorry, I have to keep clear my throat. What we do in church, we preach, born again, born again, get saved, get saved, miss hell, miss hell, go to church, go to church, go to heaven when you die. And that's what we call the gospel of, of Jesus Christ. Born again, born again, get saved, get saved. Are you saved? Miss hell, miss hell, go to church, go to church, go to heaven when you die. Okay? That's what we preach. That's what we call the gospel of Jesus Christ. But that is not the gospel that Jesus Christ preached. Okay? Jesus Christ preached the kingdom. He said the kingdom of heaven is like this. The kingdom of heaven is like that. The kingdom of heaven is like this. The kingdom of heaven is like that. That's what the Lord preached. So we've been going through uh, each one of the parables, each one of the metaphors, each one of the teachings that the Lord had on the kingdom of heaven and looking at uh, what the scripture actually says, exegeting that and asking the Holy Spirit for any type of prophetic revelation about that. So I've talked about the parable of the sower. I've talked about the, uh, the wheat and the tares. I've talked about the mustard seed. I've talked about the parable of the yeast of the leaven. Last week, I talked about, uh, last month, I talked about the parable of the hidden treasure. And tonight, I'm going to talk about the pearl of great price. That's the stuff that the Lord actually said. He preached and taught the kingdom, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. That was Jesus' primary message. 
Is that our primary message as modern Christians? Is that what we talk about? In my experience, what we talk about is born again, born again, get saved, get saved, miss hell, miss hell, go to church, go to church, go to heaven when you die. And that ain't what the Lord preached, and that's why ain't no power in it, because that ain't what the Lord said. Okay? So tonight, we're going to look at a pearl of great price, which is, which is Matthew 13.45. And I'm not going to be before you long, but I want to be sure, again, that you have some tools to work with to understand what the Lord's message was and to understand what we can take advantage of and what we can walk in and what we can live in right now as believers. Okay? Okay, Matthew is the first book in the New Testament. For those of you that don't, don't know anything about Matthew, Matthew worked for the Internal Revenue Service of the Romans. He was a tax collector. And they had a very shady reputation because they would always add some tax on to the people. If the Romans charged them 10%, they would charge the people 15%. They would pocket that extra five. And everybody knew they did that, but they didn't really have any power to stop them from doing that. So Matthew came from a very shady profession and a very shady background and did nobody like him. And the Lord called him, and this is one of the 12 men that walked with Christ, okay? Uh, just to let you know that you're going to get to decide who God calls and uses. That's up to him. So Matthew chapter 13, verse 45 through 46 I'm reading out of the NIV, the New International Version. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away and sold everything he had and bought it. Now, that's the second time the Lord has said that the king, uh, kingdom of heaven is like when you find it, people go and sell everything they have to get it, to get into it, to possess it. Now, why do people do that? People do that because once you really tap into the kingdom of heaven, once you really tap into what God is trying to teach you about the way his kingdom works, the way his kingdom works is you get a guaranteed return. If nothing else, you get a guaranteed return. I want you to think about the times in life where you have labored and toiled and labored and toiled and worked and worked and worked and worked and worked and worked and, and poured yourself out to try to make something go and nothing happened or it fell flat or eventually the whole thing just fell apart, or you invested in somebody, and they left you. Has that ever happened to you <laughs> in life? Okay, when you learn how to invest in God's kingdom, when you learn how to do what the Lord tells you to do, the way he tells you to do it, you get a guaranteed return. When you invest with God, you get a guaranteed return, not just in this life, but also in the life to come. But you do get it in this life. In due season, you shall reap. If you don't faint, if you don't give up, if you don't collapse. You see that? And what other kingdom do you know makes that kind of guarantee? That when you invest, guaranteed you get a return. Okay? So, <clears throat> again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. Now, I want you to notice some very uh, key words here. When we go behind the, the English language, and you heard me say it in other videos, when you look at the word kingdom, it says uh, royalty, a rule or a realm. When you look at the word rendered heaven, okay, it means the sky or heaven, it, happiness, power, eternity. So you could literally say Jesus preached the royal kingdom of happiness, the royal kingdom of power, the royal kingdom of eternity, the royal kingdom of the sky. Now, just think about that. <clears throat> just think about that language. Because that's what those words really mean coming out of the Greek. Coming out of the Greek. Excuse me. So he preached the royal kingdom of the sky. He preached the rule of the sky. He preached the realm of eternity. That's why he says the kingdom of heaven is so valuable. Because anything that you deal with when it comes to the kingdom of heaven will last forever. I want you to think about your favorite anything that you bought. Favorite shirt favorite shoes, favorite car, favorite anything, eventually it gets old. No matter how well you take care of it, eventually it gets old. It just wears out. Isn't that right? <clears throat> what the Lord is saying is that his kingdom doesn't work that way. That's why it's so precious. And that's something I know people don't understand. That's why the, the unbelievers and the mockers and the scorners and the people that make fun 
of Jesus and the people that make fun of Scripture and the people that make fun of believers don't understand, what God is offering you is a chance to invest in something that will never fade away. Can I give you some examples of that? Yes, I can. Abraham, God gave him a name. His name has never faded away. In fact, God himself refers to himself as the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And Jesus said in the days to come, he's going to sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and have food in the kingdom. Those men's names have never faded away. King David, the greatest king of Israel. Uh, Esther, who wasn't even, uh, no, excuse me, Esther who became queen, but Ruth, who wasn't even a Jew, who was a Moabitess that got grafted in. Her name has never faded away. Okay? Because that's one of the things that only God can give you. The name of Jesus is above, above every name because Father gave Jesus the name of names. The name above every name. But God gives you a name too. And God can give you a name that will never fade away. That's why we know who Noah is. That's why we know who Moses is. That's why we know these people. Because their names are never going to fade. <clears throat> and when God himself refers to himself as the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Bishop Drake's uh, preached about it recently, that's why Esau was so upset when he sold his birthright when he realized what he'd done. If Esau hadn't sold his birthright, God would call himself the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Esau. Can you believe that's what Esau gave up? That's what he gave up when he sold that birthright for a bowl of soup. But now Jacob's name, Israel, that's why we call them the children of Israel, to this day, because Jacob's name is not going to fade. That's just one example of what I mean of what you get when you invest with God. So that's why God said it's worth throwing everything you have into his kingdom because it's the kingdom of the sky. It's the kingdom of happiness. It's the kingdom of eternity. It's not going to fade. And if you don't want to invest in that, then whatever else you invest in that's not God's kingdom, guaranteed, is going to fade. Guaranteed, it's going to get old. Guaranteed, no matter how well you take care of it, it's not going to be around forever. Guaranteed. Okay? So it says, the kingdom of heaven, okay, the royal rule, the realm of the sky. I just love that. The realm of the sky, the kingdom of happiness, the kingdom of power, the kingdom of eternity. I just love that is like a merchant. Stop. That word merchant. A trader. Uh, not a traitor with a T. A trader like Trader Joe's. A trader, one on a journey. Okay? So we always talk about this life like it's a journey, like we're traveling through this life. We're journeying, and we are. Okay? So a merchant or trader, so that means you have some stuff to invest, or there's some stuff that you want to buy. There's some items that you're looking for when you're a merchant or a trader, okay, not, again, not a traitor, a trader, okay, and so uh, the Lord says his kingdom is like a merchant or a trader in search of fine pearls, now look at that, beautiful, valuable pearls, you want some fine jewelry, you want some jewelry that has value, and then the Lord goes on to say, when he found that merchant, when he found one very precious pearl, he went away and sold all he had and bought it. That phrase there, very precious, means of great value, very costly, very precious. Okay? He went away and sold all that he had. Okay? He disposed of everything he had so he could invest in that pearl and he bought it. Okay? To go to market, to purchase, especially to redeem. Okay? So what does that mean? That means that the Lord is telling us that the kingdom of heaven is worth selling everything you have and investing in it. Now, let me be practical. That does not mean go out and sell your property and sell your clothes and sell your stocks and whatever kind of assets. That's not what he's talking about. He's talking about investing everything you have in God's kingdom. What does that look like in practical terms? Instead of trying to pick a spouse on your own, why don't you ask God who it is that he has ordained for you to marry? Instead of trying to figure out what college to go to on your own, why don't you ask the Holy Spirit, what college do you want me to go to? Where am I supposed to be? Instead of trying to figure out whatever age you are in life, instead of trying to figure out what am I supposed to be doing in this season of my life, why don't you ask God, what do you say I'm supposed to be doing in this season of my life? Instead of picking a car by the natural, what if you learn how to buy a car in the Spirit and let the Holy Spirit lead you to the best deal for your money. 
Do you see what I'm saying? That's why people sometimes don't understand that this is talking about practical stuff. This is not talking about uh, when you die only. There's definitely rewards and treasures on the other side. But what about now? What if you get ready to buy some property and there are some bad things that happen to that property or there's some leaks or there's some faults in that property that you don't even know yet? And in the next year, a whole bunch of stuff is going to break down, cost you a lot of money to fix it. And the Holy Spirit, when you're looking at it, the Holy Spirit says, no, don't get that. And then you keep searching and searching and searching until you get a yes, until you get a green light. And the Holy Ghost says, buy that one. The Holy Ghost just saved you thousands of dollars worth of repairs because you didn't pick your home based on the natural, based on what you thought. You picked your home by investing in your prayer language and speaking in tongues and learning how to become sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit so that when the Holy Ghost wanted to show you what house to buy or not, you knew that was him talking to you. How many times in your life, especially as a Christian, <clears throat> how many times in your life have you done something and then something inside of you says, I knew I should have done that other thing. I knew I should have turned the other way. I knew I shouldn't have gone to that place. I knew, I knew, I knew, I knew. Okay? That's because you haven't invested in God's kingdom to build up your prayer language and build up your spirit's sensitivity to the Holy Spirit so that when he's leading, you know that's him talking and you know to listen to him. That's how you're supposed to pick a church. If you're going to a church right now and it's because you grew up in that church or you're going there because you think some cute people go there or you're in love with the pastor, whatever you want to say, if you didn't bother to pray and ask the Lord, is this the place you want me to be at? Then you are literally wasting your time. You are supposed to be at the place that God wants you to be at. Okay? And so the Lord says that um, we, when we get a hold of his eternal kingdom, the kingdom of happiness, he wants us to be happy. Okay? And how do you be happy? You be happy by, first of all, loving the Lord. Second of all, by fully realizing yourself. By becoming all that you're supposed to be, that's how to be happy in life. Love the Lord and learn how to love yourself. And then out of those two healthy loves, you love your neighbor as yourself. And one of the best ways to love your neighbor is to serve them with your gifts. And you can't share your gifts in life if your gifts aren't developed. God told us how to be happy. His kingdom is the kingdom of happiness. So why would you live 20, 30, 40, 50 years and be miserable when God already told you how to be happy? See what I mean? So <clears throat> that's the kind of stuff that Jesus preached. And I don't even know in some of our religious backgrounds if we've ever heard anything like that in church at all. But that's the kind of stuff that the Lord preached, that his kingdom is worth investing everything we have in it. It's going to produce happiness. It's going to produce power. Okay? It's going to produce all that in your life right now. Not wait until you die. Okay? All right. So if I have any questions, put them on the screen. If I got any prayer requests, put them on the screen right now. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. When you see me close my eyes and speak in tongues, I'm asking the Holy Spirit, is there any more general prophetic words, any healing, physical healing, any demons that need to be cast out, deliverance, and any uh, financial words to be released, okay? So if you have a prayer request, put it on the screen now, okay? Okay, I think we're good. Uh, yes, the only thing coming in my heart is the Lord wants to encourage us to get ready for the 2020 season. Everything's going to change next year. Everything's going to change next year. This is December 12th, okay? We are almost in January of 2020. Everything is going to change next year. So get ready. Be sure you're ready for it, okay? All right. Well, I believe that's it for tonight. Thank you so much for those of you that joined me live and those of you that are watching on the replay and watching on YouTube. Uh, remember, as I said, I encourage you to go back to the beginning of this and, and have, listen to me explain in great detail what No More Genius is actually about so you can get a full message. Now, I am releasing a prophetic, a daily prophetic devotional. It's a way for you to read a scripture about the prophetic. Amen, Jay Mason. Uh, God bless you. Thank you for tuning in. For you to read a scripture about the prophetic every day. Meditate on that scripture. Begin to listen to what the Holy Spirit tells you about that scripture, write down what he says, and then begin to practice what the Holy Spirit says in your life. And then there's another section where you can come back later 
And again, write down the victory you have experienced by walking in the prophetic re revelation God gave you, okay? And it's a different scripture every day. So it's going to be for a whole year. I'm going to release it in quarters. So you can get a fresh copy every year and develop your prophetic walk. So I'm going to release January, Feb January February, and March starting on, uh, I might release it December 31st, so you're good to go, or I might release it January 1st, but it's going to be at the end of the year, beginning of next year, so you can have something to, to begin to develop your own personal prophetic walk with God, and it works like a journal, so you can write down what the Lord says, and then write down the victory you got from being obedient to what the Lord said. That's what's coming, okay? So just want to let you know that, all right? Amen, and God bless you. Enjoy the rest of your Thursday. Enjoy the rest of your week. Uh, I'll see you again on Sunday. And then remember, I'm also going to release prophetic locator words at the end of this year and the beginning of next year so that we can locate ourselves in the spirit so we can hear what God has to say about this year and so we can get ready and be sure we're aligned with the head of the church, Jesus Christ, for next year. All right? Amen. God bless you. And I'll talk to you next time.